Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Did Mammals Evolve to Live in the Sea? Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Marine mammals are well adapted to living in the sea. For example, whales and dolphins are excellent divers, hold their breath for long periods, and can sleep underwater. However, this was not always the case. In fact, whales and dolphins, collectively known as cetaceans, evolved from mammals that once lived on land. How did cetaceans develop these abilities to live underwater? A group of chemicals called neuropeptides may hold the answer. These chemicals play important roles in numerous bodily processes, including sleep, feeding, and the maintenance of blood pressure. We compared the neuropeptides found in cetaceans with those found in land mammals. We wanted to see how they are different. We found that marine mammals have lost the ability to make many of the neuropeptides that land mammals still have. So, differences in neuropeptides may explain how cetaceans adapted to live in a marine environment. Introduction Did you know that cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises are mammals? About 50 million years ago, their ancestors lived on land. They later evolved to live in marine environments. Such an extreme habitat transition required many adaptations. One remarkable example is how cetaceans sleep. One half of their brain rests, while the other half remains active. This unihemispheric sleep ensures cetaceans are always watching out for predators and food. Other adaptations help cetaceans hunt their prey underwater. For example, reduced oxygen demands allowed them to dive for longer and control their blood pressure at great depths. Thick layers of fat also helped insulate them from cold waters. There are many molecules that control physiological traits like sleep, blood pressure, and temperature control. Among them, neuropeptides are especially important. Neuropeptides are chemical messengers. They relay signals from one nerve cell to another triggering a physiological change. They can also have more than one role in the body. Luckily, neuropeptides are found in all mammals. We wanted to know how these neuropeptides changed as mammals evolved. This information can help us understand how mammals adapted to living in the ocean. In this image, you can see that Pachycetus lived on Earth around 50 million years ago. Scientists think it is one of the first ever cetaceans. Although Pachycetus could swim and catch fish, it still mostly lived on land. Its descendants would become increasingly aquatic, eventually evolving into marine mammals like whales and dolphins. You can see Pachycetus with its head facing the left of the image and its tail facing the right. Methods. Step one, identifying important neuropeptides. We identified 12 neuropeptides. Previous research has shown they may be related to important traits in cetaceans. Step two, obtaining DNA sequences for each. Neuropeptides are microscopic, so it is hard to detect differences between them. An easier way to compare neuropeptides is to look at their DNA sequences. DNA is like an instruction manual. A specific sequence can build a specific molecule in this case, a neuropeptide. We got the DNA sequences for our neuropeptides from online databases. We did this for 202 different mammal species. This included 41 species of cetaceans. Step three, comparing the ability to create neuropeptides. We used a computer program to build the neuropeptides based on their DNA sequences. The computer program gave each DNA sequence a score from 0 to 5. A score of 0 meant that the neuropeptide would work. Think of it as having zero problems. A score between 2 and 5 meant that the neuropeptide would not work. Then we compared the scores for each of the 12 neuropeptides in cetaceans and land animals. Results it turns out cetaceans have lost the ability to make many of the neuropeptides found in land mammals. We found that many cetacean neuropeptides had scores higher than two. Cetaceans also had fewer DNA sequences that made functional neuropeptides than any other group of mammals. 
For example, neuropeptide B helps mammals sleep and suppresses hunger. Most cetaceans do not have the correct DNA sequence to build neuropeptide B. Here in figure one, you can see neuropeptide B in cetaceans has a slightly different DNA sequence than land mammals. This results in a molecule that doesn't function. The loss of neuropeptide B in cetaceans is associated with changes in sleep pattern, one brain hemisphere active, the other resting, and feeding activities does not suppress appetite. In the image, the top of the flowchart is for marine mammals and the bottom flowchart is for land mammals. On the far left, you can see the DNA sequences for neuropeptide B. The different colors indicate different DNA sequences. In the second column of the flowchart, you can see the neuropeptide molecule that is created. The red slash means the molecule does not function properly for the marine mammal. In the third column, you can see the sleeping pattern. For the marine mammal, the left side of the brain is turned on, as indicated by the yellow color and light bulb symbol. The right side of the brain is sleeping. For the land mammal, both sides of the brain are asleep. In the last column, you can see the impact of feeding behavior. The marine mammal, a dolphin, is shown eating fish, while the land mammal, a cow, is shown sleeping. Looking at the figure, how does neuropeptide B affect feeding behavior in cetaceans? There were some DNA sequences that created neuropeptides that worked. For example, cetaceans still produce neuropeptide Y. This controls blood pressure, fat storage, and sleep. Discussion why would cetaceans have lost the ability to make many of the neuropeptides that land mammals still have? Over time, DNA can collect mutations. Sometimes these mutations create new traits that are beneficial. Sometimes they don't do anything. But at other times, they can mess up the instructions the DNA carries. This means that whatever the DNA sequence makes, it won't work properly. This is probably what happened to these neuropeptides. The ancestors of modern cetaceans probably didn't need a lot of these neuropeptides in their new marine environment, so when the DNA mutated, it didn't matter. They may have even benefited by losing the ability to make specific neuropeptides. For example, they may have lost the ability to make neuropeptide B, which suppresses hunger and induces sleep. This allowed cetaceans to eat lots of food and keep one half of their brain awake. Luckily, most neuropeptides have more than one role, so cetaceans didn't completely lose the ability to sleep or regulate their appetite. The evolution of cetaceans from land mammals is complex, but it is clear that the loss of working neuropeptides played a role. Their loss allowed early cetaceans to thrive in a marine habitat. Conclusion Understanding how cetaceans have adapted to the marine world could help us understand how other mammals have evolved in their new environments. After all, transitioning from land to water is not the only major habitat change mammals have undergone. For example, bats transition from climbing trees to flying. Unfortunately, many animals and plants are facing habitat loss. Find out about local plants and animals in your area and how you can help protect them. Thank you for listening to this recording. This work has been adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal BMC Biology, published on September 2, 2024. Research conducted by Raul Valente, Raquel Ruivo, and others from the Interdisciplinary Center of Marine and Environmental Research at the University of Porto in Portugal. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.